Investing in dividend stocks has long been considered a wise move for investors seeking income and stability. Now, among the various types of dividend stocks, high yielding ones are particularly tempting due to the promise of substantial returns. However, it is crucial to recognize that while high yielding dividend stocks can be alluring, they also carry significant risks that investors must carefully consider. Now, in this video, we are going to explore the reasons behind some of the appeal of high yielding dividend stocks but also we're gonna shed light on the potential dangers associated with investing in them. Now stay tuned because in this video, we're going to go over three reasons why I think dividend investors should stay away from high yielding stocks and ETFs and invest in other better options instead. Now we're going to go through all this and more right after you please drop a like in this video and subscribe for more future content like this. Now this should of course go without saying, there are some very high yielding stocks and ETFs that have been historically and are currently great investment opportunities and choices. But I know that when I was a newer investor, I definitely favored anything and everything that had a high starting yield. And now after six or seven years of investing in the stock market, I obviously know now at this point that just because a stock or ETF has a high starting yield does not necessarily mean it's a good investment option. Now, before we get into some of the concerns, the three reasons on why I think investors should stay far away from high yielding options, let's go over some of the good, just to be fair. So when it comes to high yielding dividend stocks and ETFs, the attractive returns and steady income is one of the primary reasons investors are drawn into high yielding dividend stocks. Now, this is because a higher dividend yield implies a greater percentage of income earned relative to stock price. This can be highly appealing to income seeking investors like myself, especially in times of low interest rates when alternative investment options offer much lower returns. But moreover, higher yielding dividend stocks can provide investors with a steady stream of income and regular dividend payments can offer a sense of security, especially for people that are maybe retired or individuals looking for consistent cash flow for whatever reason. Now, the first reason on why I think it might be a good idea to stay away from high yielding dividend stocks for ETFs is because of the potential for a dividend cut in the future. Now, a dividend cut refers to the reduction in the amount of dividend payments that a company distributes to its shareholders. It occurs when a company decides to lower the dividend amount compared to previous periods or when the company eliminates the dividend payouts altogether. A dividend cut can be seen as a negative signal to investors, as it suggests the company is facing financial difficulties or experiencing a decline in profitability. Now there's multiple reasons on why a company might choose to cut their dividend. It could be because of reasons like financial challenges, like we talked about before, an economic downturn, maybe more of a macro event. It could also even be industry specific factors, which maybe the company thinks the dividend might not be sustainable for much longer. Now, coming from someone that's actually held on to companies that have actually cut their dividend, let me tell you, it can be very stressful as an investor. A company like AT&T recently just cut their dividend back in 2022. The dividend that AT&T was paying on a consistent basis in 2021, around 39 cents per share per quarter, was cut down to just 28 cents per share per quarter. And even now, as of recently, with AT&T and the entire communication sector kind of going through some more turmoil, some investors are even speculating that another dividend cut could be soon. So with AT&T, this is just one great example of a stock that's offering a current forward dividend yield of 8.2%, which could be very appealing, especially to newer investors that are seeking to generate high amounts of dividend income pretty much right off the bat. Where on the other hand, something like Apple stock is currently yielding a 0.49% forward, which means that an investor in theory would receive about 16 times more in dividend payouts on a quarterly basis if they were to invest into AT&T rather than Apple. But obviously it doesn't take a genius to see on why Apple would have been a much, much better investment compared to something like AT&T on any time frame basically that you want to look at. And this is even with AT&T's massive dividend that they've been offering pretty much forever. Now, another reason on why I think that high yielding dividend stocks and ETFs should be avoided at all costs is because of the overall long-term price decay. If we look at something like Verizon, for example, on the max chart all the way back since around 1993, Verizon as far as share price is down over 38%, which means that if investors would have bought into Verizon, they would be down around 38% as far as the share price. Now Verizon, for example, is offering a forward dividend yield of 8.3%, which once again could be very appealing to investors that are seeking income on a consistent basis. 
And even though unlike AT&T, Verizon has been paying a dividend consistently for around 20 plus years and has even been raising their dividend on a yearly basis for the most part. It still doesn't change the fact that even though Verizon is offering a very high yield, the actual price, the actual share price of Verizon has decayed significantly. Now, another example of an investment vehicle that is offering a massive yield but has decayed like crazy in actual price is the QYLD cover call ETF. Now, this is an ETF that's pretty popular for good reason. The fund is currently offering around 11.75% forward dividend yield. But very much so, just like Verizon, this fund has also decayed long term in actual ETF price, which means that if investors would have bought into this fund back around 10 or so years ago, they would be down significantly as far as ETF price. Now, of course, the argument is, is that some of these funds offer such a high dividend that it will definitely make up for some of the price decay over the long term. But all I'm saying is that there are other higher quality dividend ETFs out there, something like SCHD, for an example, that doesn't decay in ETF price and actually appreciates and will actually most likely continue to appreciate over time, as well as pay out a pretty decent sized dividend of around three or four percent if the dividend is something that you're looking for without of course trading sideways and or decaying over the time frame of you holding on to the etf now the last reason on why i think sometimes high yielding dividend stocks and etfs are better off ignored is because the total return historically speaking is most of the time much worse than that of just buying into the s&p 500. now if we were to take walgreens philip morris and 3m for example all big companies, big corporations that are pretty well known and well respected and compared their total return, which is dividends and share price included, and compare their performance to the S&P 500 on the five year time frame. You can see that even though Walgreens, Philip Morris and 3M all offer a massive dividend yield compared to that of the S&P 500, they underperformed S&P by quite a bit. Walgreens over the last five years has returned 46.15%. Philip Morris has returned 60.46%, which is actually pretty close. And 3M has returned minus 39.52%. Where are those that just bought into the S&P 500 around five years ago and didn't necessarily chase a high yield are sitting at a 74 plus percent return. So this is a very easy visual that shows you that, that even though companies that are offering a very high yield and could produce income on a monthly or quarterly basis, a lot of times these companies are going to underperform the S&P 500 and I get it there are edge cases on where this doesn't happen on where there are certain names that do yield quite a bit that do beat the S&P 500 maybe on different time frames but I'm just saying generally speaking it's pretty hard to find a high yielding option that's also going to beat the S&P 500 which is why I just want to warn majority investors when it comes to high yields but I want to hear from you guys down below when it comes to high yielding dividend stocks and ETFs do you think they're worth buying into or do you think most investors are better off to stay away from them? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on the video and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.